Hi, Witchling. Welcome back to my channel. It is me, your local chaotic witch on, and today we are talking about patron gods. I took notes as I usually do at this point, because I feel like a lot of the topics that I go over are pretty complex at this point. <laughs> and not even complex, but like, there are a lot of opinions on them. And I think that patron gods are interesting because in the modern day, we have found almost a new, a new meaning, but a new way of interacting with the word that is a little different than historically was shown, which doesn't make it any less valid. And I'm sure that there is, you know, historical basis for personal patrons and having like a personal god that you are connected to and stays with you for your whole life most times not always but we maybe don't see kind of as much of it as I think we see in the modern day which is okay but yeah when we talk about patron gods I know that it's a very big word all over social media you hear the term patron matron patroness everything all, all over and a lot of the questions that I usually get are like what even are patron gods? Who are my patrons? How do I find them? How would I like even go about it? Like what constitutes a patron god? And these are all amazing questions and important questions that we're going to go over with my big old list. Firstly, what are patron gods? Um, when you look up this term, you find a lot of language like tutelary and historically pagan gods have been those that are guardians, protectors, etc., of a particular place, geographic feature, person, lineage, nation, culture, or occupation. Um, an example of this is Greek cities having different patron gods, and that, I believe Rome had that as well, but I'm not 100% sure. We can also see the word patron used a lot in saint work, where different saints are patrons or hold patronage over different things like Saint Joseph, patron saint of the Universal Church, Saint Rita, patron saint of, the, of impossible causes, Saint Andrew, patron saint of fishermen. So that's an example of like what they can be petitioned for as well as things that they rule over patron wise. Patron of place and patron of profession are pretty common historically for patron gods, patron entities, patron saints. Different people get pulled to patrons in different ways. Um, some work under their patronage like a profession. Some are in particular areas tied to their patronage. Um, a lot of times you're pulled to specific things about them and sometimes they just find you. Like let's say you grow up in a city where there happens to be a temple of Artemis nearby. You may feel more pulled to Artemis as someone who inhabits that city because you're in a place that she may have had patronage over. In my personal opinion, you don't need a patron or patroness or a matron deity. If you're really curious about finding and connecting with a patron god or deity, I am assuming you are because you're watching this video, I recommend looking towards what you're pulled to. Hold on, maybe I'll keep on done. Armadillers keep digging. Little holes in my backyard. Anyways, <laughs> if you're really curious about finding and connecting with a patron deity, I recommend looking towards what you're pulled to. Even then, I think patron deities often will to in time choose us. Ideas about patron deities in modern day society, when you look on the internet, there's so many conversations about patron deities on Reddit, in blogs, patheos, etc. everything. And in our modern day society, patron gods are those which play a very specific role in a particular human's life, which is referred to as personal patron. Different religions will have different relations between patron gods and humans e.g. Hellenism relies on reciprocal relationships between humans and deities. Some believe that everyone has a patron deity. It may just not look the way you expect. You don't need a patron deity. To be a good pagan or a witch, and there are many different ways to practice paganism, including polytheism. Some paths have you worshipping every single member of that pantheon in the case of like Hellenic Reconstructionism, Hellenic polytheism. Some also think patron gods can be chosen, like choosing to worship a deity or saint that you feel connected to. Um, an example of this in terms of saint work is at your confirmation within Catholicism, you choose a saint's name, and that, that becomes your patron saint. Good soup. A lot of information on the internet around patron deities is A, Wiccan god slash goddess ideas, or B, ideas around historical patronage, tying patron gods to the land or specific professions. That is not the problem. That's okay. Um, I'm of the mindset that understanding historical context and cultural context is extremely important when working with deities. 
but there needs to be an understanding that in the modern day we may not do things exactly the same as the ancient worshippers of that deity did, or ancient people who worked with deities. And even now, there's so many different ideas within modern pagans on what the best way to worship is, how you should interact with gods, what's disrespectful, what's not, that you can't really tie it off as like, this is the right way to do things and this is the wrong way to do things. You can't, because there's so many people doing things one way and then another way and then it's just ooh, ooh, crazy town. <laughs> So, and I did find a lot of Wiccan god slash goddess information, I think, because when we think of deity work, at least in the witchcraft sphere, Wicca probably contributed to it a lot. They were a, they're a specific religion, but they were also a term that was synonymous with witchcraft for a very long period of time that, you know, people were like, oh, Wicca is witchcraft, so everyone who is a witch is a Wiccan. There's still ideas surrounding that that have continued there, but the worship of deities probably has a lot of Wiccan influences, at least on the internet. If you are uncomfortable with that, I really encourage you to dissect your own practice and look at the ways maybe Wiccan practices have influenced it. The ideas that I found online did kind of look at the ideas of having a god slash goddess when people I talked to have multiple deities, including sometimes multiple patron deities. We also have examples of those who will evoke or invoke a deity for a very specific reason or work with a deity for a very specific reason. Sometimes deities come forward for people to work with them on specific things or more forward. Like if you work with a whole pantheon, let's say you're working with the Norse pantheon, Tyr or Frigg may step forward a little bit more in a certain situation to help you. On the internet, we see a very eclectic worship of different pantheons that historically may have intersected, like Egyptian, Greek, Roman, or those who work with a Norse deity and a Celtic deity. That's something that eclecticism has been around like, for histories um, like a long time. And I think the important thing is that like understanding that if they're syncretized, they may have been forcibly syncretized. And if you're work working with two different pantheons now, make sure you don't look at a Greek deity through the lens of a Norse deity, or look at a Roman deity through the lens of a Celtic deity. That's kind of important because they all have cultural contexts and different ways that they were worshipped throughout their time period that need to be taken into consideration when you're worshipping and working with multiple pantheons, which is a lot of work. I've done it. I've done it. It's a lot of work. There was a period where it was like get Celtic, Norse, Egyptian. That was a lot of work. It was a lot of work because I was studying three different mythologies, three different pantheons, as well as the different worship for those three pantheons and how people historically worship them and all this other stuff. Oh yeah, a lot of work practicing it with that. You may or may not feel pulled to deity work in general. This is more of a conversation around like, you know, deity work is a part of paganism in the same way that it could be a part of witchcraft in your witchcraft practice. And you may or may not feel like you have a patron deity and that's okay. You don't have to have a patron deity. You can spend your entire life working with a bunch of different gods and goddesses of one pantheon or multiple pantheons and so, like, not my business, do it, it's your, it's your practice. As long as you're respectful and understanding of the historical and cultural context and take it into consideration in your worship, even if you don't necessarily do things like 100% the same. Example, Hades worship back in the day, people threw things into pits and he wasn't whispered in the home and you wouldn't worship him in the home, mostly because there's like a fear of the dead, like Chthonic deities, you know. Fear of the dead. Um, he he's a big 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 scary boy. They don't want to usher death into the home. Very superstitious. Me too. But as a modern witch practitioner worshiping Hades, I understand how that worship was conducted in ancient Greece. But for me, it's not exactly. I'm not in the position to be able to worship Hades outside or throw things into a giant pit for him. And I am gonna mention him in the home. And those are some differences in my practice and my worship of Hades versus ancient worship of Hades. But I still understand what ancient worship looked like and the context in which Hades existed in ancient Greece. 
Anyways, <laughs> there are also examples of devotees, those who devote themselves to a god slash goddess slash deity. While this deity may not have been a patron deity for the individual, they still decide to worship and devote themselves to them. I considered myself a devotee of Fedoya World while I worked with her, and I worked with her for a little over a year. My experiences with my patrons. So my particular patron deity, patroness, is Diana, and this is because of a couple reasons. One, lineage. She's been with my family for generations. Don't know how I didn't see her coming. Two, path. Many Italian folk practitioners work with Diana. Um, not all, but many. Um, depends on the sect of Italian folk magic. If you're looking at, you know, Benedicaria, which is the Catholic, folk Catholic magic, people you may not be working with. <laughs> A pagan god in that sense. Um, if you're doing like something that would look a little bit more like aspects of Shigeria, which is like, uh, in my opinion, there are a lot of different terms here, like Shigeria, Trigoneria, that people have different definitions for. So, Strigeria, Italian witchcraft, or Strige, Strigeria. Strigeria is something that in my book represents anything that would have been considered witchcraft historically but wasn't called witchcraft. So it could be like folk magic. Where Sorigoneria is more of a term that I use to describe Italian-American reconstructionist witchcraft, which is like Raven Gramassi. Shout out Raven Gramassi. I kind of have beef with him. If you want to hear about my beef with Raven Gramassi, leave a comment. It's not that I don't respect him as an author. As another author, as an individual, as what he did for the Italian-American folk witchcraft population, I respect him. But he definitely created a new tradition and didn't uphold it. <laughs> he created a new tradition. And I think there's a, a feeling... Okay, I'm getting off topic. This is another video. If you want to see this video, leave a comment. I'm not getting into this right now. There's an entire article on like Sigurdia and Italian American folk magic. Strigoneria, I don't know where that word came from, I have to look. It looks like it's a lot of Italian American. It's commonly translated historical evidence of modern practitioner folk magic practice. Practices of Strigoneria include making Bredia, charm bags, and healing Bolocchio, although Strigoneria does indeed make use of a variety of Catholic practices. God, that is a whole thing. Anyways, lots of different terms and different sects of Italian folk magic. Me, this is another video, also me. Rants. Another way that Diana became my patron deity choice. I like to think I had a choice in working with Diana versus staying on a Norse pagan path with Fedoya, but I'm not always so sure. Because of my lineage and the reclamation of my heritage, Diana came forward as my patron. I've been working to connect with my ancestors and learn Italian folk magic for about maybe two years. Almost, probably a year and a half actually. I was under the impression that Freya, the Norse goddess, was my patron deity purely for the length in which she was in my life, over a year. But based on decisions around my path, my connection with nature, and a few other symbols I had since I was a child, it kind of became clear that Diana was my patron goddess. I'm of the belief that Diana, since she was associated with my family, was always around, therefore just waiting for the right time to come forward as a deity. So how do I connect with my patron deity? Uh, there's a lot of interesting debate and conversations on how to connect with a patron deity online. And they span from explore your surroundings and patronage of the area, looking at your professions, um, to do a guided meditation to find your patron deity. They're all viable options. You can do any of those. I think you probably should explore profession and patronage of area. Um, but I honestly think the best option is to study and research deities, pantheons, etc. You have your whole life to find your patron god. But you can by start by looking and seeing where you feel pulled to. By you can look at Pantheon because if you have a patron deity, you should also look at the Pantheon. Like, is this Pantheon one you feel pulled to, or is this Pantheon one you feel pulled to? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be lineage based pulling to, like it is in my case, but like, do you click with the Egyptian gods, or do you find that it's really difficult to worship them and really difficult to understand their mythology? Then I wouldn't recommend working with Egyptian gods. <laughs> Region. Are you in an area that has strong devotions to a particular deity? Um, if you're on indigenous land in America or Canada, you probably will not find a place that is devoted to a particular pagan god. This isn't really their land. It's not our land either. It's stolen land. So uh, you probably won't find like a 
deity tied to a specific place unless we're really like unless there's a city that I don't know of that's under the patronage of a particular god but I'm thinking like if you're in Greece if you're in Rome if you're in Italy um, if you're in Turkey because those are like even in um, Scandinavia Ireland like my friend who's an Irish folk practitioner has a giant mural of Bridget in his town so like th that's one profession is your profession under the patronage of a particular god example are you a hunter do you make weapons for a living so like and i and i understand that our professions in the modern day are very different than ancient professions like i don't know if anyone's out here like i guess the blacksmiths still exist but like riding chariots in a coliseum may may not be super hard or easy to come by but I still think, you know, exploring it is fun. And then what do you feel interested in? Like, are you consistently seeing imagery of Aries or Owls? Have they been super present in your life since you were a child? Is there particular imagery, animals, signs that you feel really pulled to? Like snakes or um, cats, like all the stuff that you've noticed present in your life or present recently that you feel really connected to and really bonded with. And do you feel pulled to particular mythology, story, etc.? Are you like me and you read cred Greek myths as a kid and then you're like, wow, I really like this one. And then later Diane is like, wow. Wow. Something like that. A lot of times it can take people years to recognize or find their patron deity, but oftentimes it will click for them once it does. A lot of the people, I talked to some people in my Discord server, which if you're interested, you can join my Discord server on my Patreon. A lot of times they didn't, they almost like weren't looking and they showed up and they didn't have a choice or it felt like they were like oh this makes sense once this one is here but they found the patron deity found them in a lot of cases you can choose not to participate in deity work until you find your patron deity or practice it or just study and put your intention out into the universe if you only want to work with one god and you want that god to be your patron god wait around like that you just gotta wait <laughs> and find them if you are unsure of your patron deity and consistently searching for it allow yourself the time and space to realize that oftentimes a patron deity will come to you exactly when you're ready and not a moment before and that's the hardest part is giving up control in this situation when on the internet and in virtual spaces people are talking about patron gods so much and there seems to be a really strong pressure to find your patron god allow yourself to understand that you aren't less of a witch for not or less of a pagan for not knowing who your patron deity is right off the bat you're not it's also okay to not know who your patron is like that's what i was saying but or if you mistake them if you think one deity is your patron god and then it turns out it's another one, it's okay. I did that. A lot of times our relationships with particular deities feel so much like patronage and we have such a bond to them for whatever reason. Maybe they came in a really hard time in our life. Maybe they worship of them got us through a really hard period. Maybe working with them showed us things about ourselves that we are struggling to see that it feels like a patron deity. And it's okay to be wrong like we need to be a little bit more i think personally we need to be a little bit more open about deity misidentification as well because like do you know how many deities there are like in the world there's a lot and off the top of my head egyptian like greek roman celtic uh, all different deities of open pantheons, and there's even more than that, Gaelic. And then there's ones that are less known, especially in the terms of Greek and Roman, that of course, when a deity comes to you with certain imagery and you look up that imagery, you're probably gonna find the most popular or well-known deity of that imagery. Not necessarily the one that's reaching out to you, but the one that is most well-known. So I never understood the like, oh, so you can't identify deity. Like, no, there's a lot of imagery in deity work and from deities and gods that repeats in different pantheons and very similar archetypes in different pantheons. Like, you're telling me you know how to tell the difference between Jupiter and Zeus? Right off the bat? Like, with little to no information apart from, like, the signs of, like, lightning and you know something? Like, that. So, it's okay to be wrong. I'm telling you now, it is okay to be wrong and don't let anyone make you feel bad for misidentifying a deity 
or like not knowing who your patron is or mistaking them. Like really, it's so common. <laughs> Like, I just think that there's so much, like, judgment around, oh, so you don't know who your patron god is, or you mistook them for someone else, or oh, you don't know how to identify a deity? When there's, like, a thousands of deities out there with very similar imagery, and you couldn't find this one specific one with very little literary references? I hate that. It's judgment. Don't let them get to you. It's okay to make mistakes. If you feel as though you found your patron deity, you can start with worship and work and begin building a relationship with them. A lot of times I see the first step in connecting with a patron deity is in research. And if you want, you can even do something where you send your intention out into the universe and say, I want to meet my patron deity. Will my patron deity come forward to me? Because once you're looking and once you start calling, like, there's a chance they're gonna show up. You don't necessarily have to, like, wait around and do nothing. You can wait while they listen to your intention and manifestation. The universe is a big, big place. Not all gods are omnipresent. Also a debate online that I'm not getting into. Not all gods are omnipresent, but if you just burn enough candles and yell at the sky enough, I assure you, your patron deity will find you. <laughs> Maybe don't yell at the sky. I feel like when I yell at the sky sometimes, things move a little quicker. But if you guys want just a very basic spell walkthrough to kind of send that intent out, a manifestation, a guided meditation, whatever, to connect with your patron deities, let me know. Because, you know, it is a really big, vast world of deities out there and there's not a lot of information. I'm connecting with a personal patron and although I gave you some resources in this video it's okay to be like you know what I want more I want more patron information and yeah I will probably make more of these videos but yeah that's all I have for you guys today um thank you so much to my discord um my patreon discord for voting on this week's video and next week's video if you're interested in having voting power being a part of the book club being a part of our little discord community um you can find my Patreon link down below, but excuse me, I'm gonna start letting them choose videos that I post, or at least point me in directions of ideas. So if you're interested in having the ability to weigh in on that, um, link down below. Um, if you like this video, leave a comment. Let me know if there are other videos I mentioned during this very long video that you wanna see. And uh, if you want, you can subscribe, turn the bell on, um, you know, leave a like, but absolutely no pressure. Remember to drink water, and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. La Benedica.